In this video, I'm going to uh, walk through three hedging examples of hedging an authority rate agreement with three month SOFR futures. And so these examples are going to increase in complexity. I am going to use this uh, spreadsheet. There's a video on the spreadsheet if you want to learn more, but um, I'm going to use this spreadsheet to tell me what the risks are, to show me how to hedge, and so on. Um, it just simplifies working with these forward rate agreements and so for futures so that I don't have to do calculations myself. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my spreadsheet. I'm going to start with the simplest example, which would be a forward rate agreement that completely aligns, or the borrowing period or lending period completely aligns with a SOFR futures contract. Now, if I look at my SOFR futures for a second, we can see there's a March 2024 contract. Um, I looked it up earlier. That contract, the compounding period for that contract starts on the 20th of March and goes to the 18th of June. And if I choose that as my forward rate agreement days, start and end dates, um, I'm going to find a rate of five and a quarter, 94.75. So that's 100 minus 94.75, which is five and a quarter. So if I've done things correctly and remembered my dates correctly, that's what should come out. So let's look at trading. We're going to trade an FRA. And let's just do a million dollars. And let's put in our dates, 20 March 24 to, what did I say, 18 June 24. And we can see here this tool calculates the fair rate. It says it's five and a quarter. If I click on this, I get five and a quarter as my agreed rate. So I'm entering into an FRA. Present value of the trade is zero. And I've got a little note here to myself, which is a positive notional implies that we're borrowing. So in this FRA, we're going to borrow money. I click trade. Again, the present value of my portfolio doesn't change because I traded it at fair. And let's go look at the FRAs. We can see it here. Here's my FRA, it's a million dollars, 20th of March, 24, 18th of June, 24, five and a quarter, present value zero. I can make sure this is borrowing. If I borrow at too high a rate, let's say six, I've got a loss. If I borrow at too low a rate, or it's good for me, if I borrow at a low rate, 4%, I have a gain. So five and a quarter is our rate. That's the fair rate. You can see it here that the compounded SOFA rate is five and a quarter. Okay. So that's my position. I'm borrowing money. Now let's think about this position for a second. We've locked in borrowing. If interest rates go up, that's good for us, right? We locked in five and a quarter. If rates become six, I'm really happy that I locked in at five and a quarter. So I should make money. I go back to my risk report and I run risk. What this risk report, I'm just going to look at this SOFR risk report, which is looking at my futures contracts, and it's making the rate go up by one basis point. And we can see one basis point is worth about $25. So that's my risk to the March futures contract changing, and there's really nothing else in the risk report. Okay, if I want to hedge this position, then I need a position which loses me $25 if rates go up. Well, if I am along a SOFR futures contract, the contract is 100 minus the rate. So if rates go up, the SOFR futures contract goes price goes down. So I should go long in, and I know that the SOFR futures contract is equivalent to a million dollars of borrowing. There's that 25. So let's trade futures and we're gonna long one March contract. Again, I see no present value changes here because again, I'm trading it fair. If I run risk though, we can see the March risk is now 76 or negative 76 cents per basis point, which is a substantial reduction in the risk, right? If I have a factor of about 28 or probably 30 times. So this is my hedge. This is our simplest hedge. If I change the trade, let's clear out a trade, change the trade, let's trade a different FRA, let's go negative a million. So this is gonna be lending, 20 March 24 to 18 June 24, it's that same rate, trade, run risk. We can see now I lose $24 per basis point. If I trade a futures contract and go short, run risk, 
we can see that it hedges the position. So that's our simplest position. We run risk, it's all zero, great. So that's our simplest position. The dates perfectly line up with the SOFR futures contract, and we have a million dollars of borrowing or lending, and the SOFR futures contract is equivalent to a million dollars of borrowing or lending. My next example is almost the same, but now I'm gonna do an FRA where I'm doing $5 million in notional. We'll do the same dates this time. 20 March 24 to 18 June 24, same rate. This is borrowing, trade, no present value. If I run the risk, what we see is $121 per basis point. Well, each futures contract is equivalent to a million dollars of borrowing. Therefore, five futures contracts should be equivalent to $5 million of borrowing. I can work through this logically, or I can simply look at my numbers here. Borrowing, I make money when rates go up because I've locked in a lower borrowing rate. I need to, my hedge should be losing money when rates go up, which should be long the, Euro, the, long the SOFR futures contracts. So if I trade my futures and go five contracts, trade, run risk, again, hedges out that risk pretty nicely. Okay, so those are two pretty simple trades. They're 90-day FRAs. They line up perfectly with the Euro-dollar contract. <clears throat> so let me do another example. I just cleared everything, back down to zero. Slightly more complicated example. Let's do $10 million of lending. Let's start on that 20th of March, 24. But instead of ending on the 18th of June, let's end on the 18th of September, 24. Okay, so now we have a different fare rate. Again, it's not quite exact. You can see that two cents on $10, $10 million, pretty much nothing. Okay, so we've got two cents. This time, and let's go look at our contract for a second. This time we are, if we look at our days here, 18 September, 24 to the 20th of March, 182 days. So it's roughly two contracts in length. If we run the risk, what we're seeing is almost, there's a little bit of residual risk, but almost all the risk is in the March and June bucket. 240, 242, $244. That's like 10 contracts, $25 per contract, 10 contracts. Okay, we lose money. This is saying that we lose money when rates go up. We need to make money when rates go up, which means we need to be short. So if I'm gonna hedge, I'm gonna be short the March and June contracts, and I'm gonna be short 10 of them. So let's do 10 futures, negative 10, negative 10, trade. Run the risk. We've done a hedge. You can see the overall risk is pretty small. It's not zero, but it's relatively small. We've done a pretty good job of hedging our risk. And that's the idea. We almost never hedge risk perfectly. We don't hedge these down to the to zero. In theory, if we could trade fractional futures contracts and things like that, we could. Nobody in practice ever does. And the reason for nobody in practice ever doing that is there's this is a mathematical model. This spreadsheet contains a mathematical model, contains a mathematical model of a yield curve. If that mathematical model is wrong, these numbers are going to be wrong. If that if I trust that mathematical model, these numbers are going to be decent but not perfect because my model can't be perfect. And so hedging these numbers down to zero and precisely zero probably leaves me in a position where I've not only hedged the risk in the, in the trade, but I've also hedged kind of model risk or noise from the model. And therefore, if my model is slightly wrong, these numbers are slightly wrong. And so I'm still going to see profit and loss due to changes in the, in the market. I hope that's helpful. Um, basically, we're showing you how to hedge, how to use this spreadsheet to hedge, put in positions and see what happens. These exercises can be done pretty much as a thought exercise. You can figure out most of this without the spreadsheet. 
The only issue becomes that it's a little harder to think about and you spend a little bit more time thinking about some of the math and the spreadsheet takes that away from you.